Hi, this video is going to show you how to use a virtual machine called Android x86 for um, emulating your phone so that you can use it on your machine. The goal will be that you run pristine Lubuntu and you run Android x86 at the same time and that with them both running you're able to um, use Android x86 as your emulator. So I search on Android x86. Don't ever try to type an ID, uh, URL directly into your phone. And then it takes me to the Android x86 site. I look here and I see that they've got Nougat, which is a fairly recent build of Android available. And I'm going to open that here. And then they say, here's where you can download this ISO file which we will load into VirtualBox. Now I guess you could use a 32-bit version but I think we should, I would strongly recommend using the 64-bit version. So we're looking for 7.1 release 2 and we want to get the one that's 64-bit, right? So look for that one and then download the file and it downloads and when you're done It will pop up in your downloads directory. There it is. Okay. So Android 64 bit 7.1 release 2. Okay. So now what we want to do is go to VirtualBox. You can see I've already done this once, but I'm just going to do it again to show you how it works. And let's go to new. We're going to create a new virtual machine and we're going to call it the Android x86 video. And then it doesn't, it's not as smart as figuring out what we want. We want Linux and we're going to want, I think, the 4.x kernel at 64-bit, which would work with this one. So then we choose next. We're going to set up the size probably for your phone. A gig is plenty, but why don't we go to 2048. Plenty. You know that this is an adjustable number. You can change it if you decide you're tight on memory. I don't think you will be. And then create a virtual hard disk now and create a VDI virtual disk image and then have it be dynamically allocated and 8 gigabytes is way more size than we need but I don't want to you know, you could play with it and try, you know, 2 gig or 4 gig or something and see. But I'm just going to go with 8, part because they're dynamically allocated. And then I'm going to go to settings here on this Android x86 video image. And I'm going to go to storage. And I'm going to pick the empty guy here. And I'm going to say, set it. You know, you need it. You won't have it immediately available. So let's just do what we did. We we know we downloaded into our downloads folder and here's the one we downloaded and we open that one. And then um, on the network, switch it to bridged adapter and in advanced, just reset the MAC address. So you got a new one. I don't know if that last step is necessary, but let's just do it so we don't have that problem. And then we start the puppy. And so we could run it as a live CD, but we want to do an installation onto the hard, virtual hard disk that we've created. So we'll choose that and we want to choose create modify partitions. And we'll click on OK. Do you want to use GPT? I have no idea what that is, so I'll say no. It gets us to this strange dialog, and it's text. It's amazing, right? So we choose new. We're going to create a new partition. It's going to be a primary partition. It's going to use up all the available size, and we're going to make it bootable. So when you're done, you've got SDAH primary using the whole size available for it. And then you can choose write to write it all to disk and you type yes which says I want to do this and that takes a moment 
and then once you're done, you can quit. I'm using the arrow keys to move between the items here, so I right arrowed over to the quit as I've been moving all through this is with the right arrow keys, the arrow keys to move through this menu. And then, so which partition do I want? And it's selected, so I just click OK. And then I want ext4, which is sort of a new Linux-based partition, so that's a good one. And then you chose the format to XD all data in that partition will be lost. We don't have any data in the partition. It's empty. Are you sure you want to format it? I'm choosing yes. And install bootloader is grub. And yeah, let's go ahead and do that. So we do you want to install the system directory as read write? It's easier for debugging. That sounds good. So let's go yes. You could do some maybe more research. I've been doing this particular task for years, so I'm I just kind of am on automatic when I do it, and I'm sure there's better docs than what I've got you for it. But there it is, right? And we build the darn thing. And then when it's completed, so it's formatting the partition for us, so it's formatting the hard drive on which things are going to be run. And um, I'm going to choose... Um, I'm going to go here to settings. We've done the, our stuff with it. So we can go to storage and we don't need this guy anymore. We've used him. So we can say remove disk from virtual drive. That happens automatically when you're using Ubuntu or Ubuntu install, but with this it doesn't. And then we'll come back here and again, not trying to use the mouse right now. We'll just say, why don't we say reboot? I, I kind of like the idea of rebooting just because it seems like a better thing to do. And it chooses which one it wants. You can have it in debug mode or debug video or different modes. And then it starts to load and you can see it getting bigger. Now we're building a tablet here, not a phone. Um, I can't answer the question, how can I make it a phone? I don't think it really matters right now. The point is, is that we're going to have a quick and easy way to debug our code. Um, here and we can maybe try changing the shape of it to something other than a tablet later but right now we're doing it as a tablet and it comes up and it's booting us obviously into Android and we pick which thing we want again don't try to use the mouse right now just choose let's tab to get to let's go and we don't need to copy information although you could do that but Let's just set it up as a new phone, so it's like a blank phone. And it's checking for updates, so it's going kind of crazy. Why don't I, I'm not sure how long some of these steps will take, so I'll pause the recording while this is happening. Okay, it didn't really take long for me to get to this screen. It probably wasn't more, it was certainly less than 30 seconds, probably more like 10 or 15. Your mileage may differ. And now they want you to sign into your Google account. And I would do this. You don't have to, but it's nicer to be doing that. So if you don't mind, I'm going to pause it again and sign into my account. I, I don't think there's any mystery about how you sign into your Google account. So I'll pause and sign in myself and then come back once I'm signed in. So I tab to get down to this particular input control and then I'm going to tab again to get to the next button. And it mucks around and then it wants my password. And forgive me again, I'm going to put it on pause. Okay, I decided that I needed to start using the mouse so I could get visual confirmation that my password was correct. So I'm going to teach you something I was going to teach you later. Go to input and choose mouse integration. Just click on it. And then when you click on the screen, you get the mouse inside of here. And now you can start using the mouse. You could have done this earlier if you wanted to, but we needed it there. They want me to agree to the my firstborn and so on, all the things that they like to do. And then again, when you want to escape from the window, just hold down the right control key and drift it away. And you can get escape from it. And you can get over here. And then if you come back, you're back inside it again. All this looks good. 
So I'll choose next. I don't need to pack up to Google Drive. That's not part of my life right now for this device since it's it's not my life, right? And send system data, help improve your Android. That's fine with me. Improve location. I don't care about this stuff. They already know everything about me already. So I'll go over here and I click, I agree. And then again, you can put Google to work for you. Go app can give you personalized updates like weather and all kinds of things. The more you use it, the more it becomes. And right now, I don't need that right now. So I'm going to choose no thanks. I don't need to do use your voice. I don't need to add another email account. I don't need to do the body detection. I'm good with all of that. So I'll click all set. And it says it's adding finishing touches and select um, what you want. And I'll pick taskbar, although I really don't know what the best thing is. And then it starts here, okay? And now if you click down here, you can see the items that are available to you. And um, perhaps the most important, important to us is settings. And we'll select settings and then we'll scroll all the way down to the very bottom to about tablet and it shows the version and I'll open this and it says status. Okay. And in status, I can see my IP address. Okay. So that's my IP address for this device. Okay. And, um, that's really what I need to know. So I'm press the right control key once and my mouse escapes from all that. Okay, I'm going to stop the video here since we're kind of, we've got it installed and that was a, certainly a big step on the way to getting things done. So I'm going to go down here and that'll be the end of this video.